Uh-oh, they're finally admitting it's a Trump train. And it looks like it's scaring them to death. Greetings, and welcome back to Here's What I Heard. I'm Laura Degatis, your hostess. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. This video is going to be about an article that came across my feed just right after I'd posted my last video from last week. So, with the uh, events that have already happened in this case, the election in Virginia and the overturns and everything like that, this particular article kind of sort of shows that uh, they were aware in the first place, but it also is using some of the same tactics to try and divert 2024, I believe. I'll read you the article, but before I do that... I'm going live coming up December the 2nd, 7 p.m. Central. I'm calling the series Talk To Me America. My call-in talk show will feature you. Call in and tell the universe how you feel about the topics that affect us the most. Let us know what your experience was when things we see happening have happened to you. We cannot be free without the freedom of speech, and I want to be a part of that freedom that we are guaranteed by our Creator. So stay tuned and get your voices ready to speak out. Spread the news and stay tuned for Here's What I Heard's Talk To Me America series, coming up December the 2nd, 7 p.m. Central. In the meantime, please give us a like, a share, a subscribe, and a comment. You will be doing this on my call-in talk show, so start letting me know what you heard now in the comments. The best comments and the best phone calls will be featured in my videos all over the internet. The world wants to hear what you have to say, so call me and tell them like it is. A donation would be the ultimate and will help me get your voice out on as many platforms as possible. And you can follow me on those other platforms too. All of my links are below. Click on some of them, will ya? Now, of course, I'm sure most of you are aware that Salon Magazine is a left publication. Trump hating, anything Trump or any of his followers or sycophants, as they put in this article, is bad, bad, bad. Everything's far right, far right, far right. Well, if all you've got is far right, what's left? I'll read. I'll go, I'll read it to you and comment as I go. Salon Magazine. Donald Trump's slow motion coup. Why would they put that in parentheses or excuse me? Why would they put that in quotes in the title? That is some of the worst journalism I've ever seen, or at least writing is becoming a runaway train. They're finally admitting that there was a Trump train. Subtitle Trump and his sycophants are working on many fronts to subvert democracy. Oh, like making sure that we have uh, free and fair elections and that uh, people aren't jailed for things that like defending themselves or uh, people are allowed to worship as they please or not. America's turning point is here and now. I believe I've read Another article by this gentleman, Alan D. Blotke. They published it on October 27th, 2021 at 6 a.m. Comedian Bill Maher, former National Security Council member of Fiona Hill and New York historian Ruth Ben Giat have all recently used the term slow moving coup. In fact, that term in various formulations has appeared numerous times in Salon beginning in 2017, Donald Trump's first year as president. How convenient. It refers, of course, to the assertive and toxic maneuvers of Trump and his right-wing sycophants aimed at subverting democracy. Yeah, like he voted, he was voted in. 
It's not like he took over. He didn't send some military people in everybody and tell them this is going to be your new leader. It wasn't a pirate thing. He was voted in. Of course, they keep saying that the 2016 election was rigged, but there is no problems with 2020. Don't even ask about it. And since his electoral defeat last year at regaining any power at any cost. No, he's doing it the right way. He hasn't, again, hasn't taken any military coup or anything like that. He's not going in and taking over anything. The people that he, um, the people that he uh, uh, recommends to everybody are the ones that are getting voted in. Okay, so what? It sounds to me like the American people have woken up to the Democrats. Or the people that disagree with Trump. Trump's apparent goal is to recapture the highest office in the land so that his power, grifting, and corruption can run rampant again. First of all, the president doesn't have that much power. Not that one anyway. And he uh, pretty much tried to seem to go by the book by uh, telling Congress, hey, do your job, and they wouldn't. So, you know, you think he didn't do anything, but he did for our country and our democracy, which we have a republic, not a democracy. Otherwise, if we all decided to take this person's life away from him, we could, with no repercussions. Trump and his enablers, who could those possibly be? Just about anybody that ever talks about him? In fact, I think that this last uh, election in Virginia had a lot to do with them doing nothing but talking bad about Trump. How did Trump have anything other than endorsing this fella to do with this election? He said, yeah, vote for this guy. I would vote for this guy if I, had, if I got to vote for this guy. That's it. There was no power struggle. You need to look in the mirror, I guess, and take a look at uh, what the alternative was. Uh, I don't know anyone that actually has their children that isn't mama bear and papa bear when it comes right down to it. I don't think any amount of government's going to do that, be able to do that, unless they, well, you know. This coup would have disastrous consequences. Yeah, for you and your side, maybe, because Trump knows y'all's deal, and he's taking away any kind of monies or any kind of uh, goodies that you guys could get by being corrupt, maybe, perhaps. This is not hyperbole or melodrama. Usually when you have to say that, it is. Trump and his enablers are coming at us like a runaway train. Yeah, we're sick of being pushed around by you fuckers. And democracy is tied to the track. Good. I hope they put the republic, I hope it cuts it in half and makes it a republic again. It is important to understand how this coup is playing out. And I guess you're going to explain it to us, won't you? How the runaway train is gaining steam. Several actions are occurring simultaneously. Welcome to life. First, changes in state legislatures will allow partisans to determine election winners regardless of the actual vote and will of the people. That is not true. And partisans on both sides? You just don't want us to watch you because you're going to do something that makes you win all the time. And then blame us for it. These changes in legislatures have already begun in Texas, Georgia, and South Carolina. Actually, the changes are to where you can't go up against the legislature. A lot of states went against the legislature. They went to all the mail-in balloting and everything like that, and the legislature had zero to do with it. Second, voter suppression laws are being enacted in numerous states, with the almost over-priority of preventing people of color from voting as a top priority. Again, not true. You've already, I'm sure you've already heard all the stories about that. In fact, watch Ami Harshowitz. He goes to uh, liberal LA and asks white people what, how they think black people uh, work. And then he goes to Harlem and asks black people how black people work. And they're all astonished at who are these people talking to that we can't do the same things that you can or anyone else can. 
In fact, nobody in New York can walk around without an ID. Everyone knows that, no matter what color you are. Third, gerrymandering by Republicans is a growing strategy to affect election results. Well, it looks to me like the Republicans are going to use against you what you people put in place in the first place, in which the Republicans warned you about in the first place. I'll never forget Mitch McConnell warning you about this, saying, you use it now, but don't forget, you're not going to be in power forever. So you have nothing, nobody to blame but yourselves. This week, Texas Governor Greg Abbott approved a pernicious new plan. Of what? Fourth, Trump's promulgation of his big lie and the other disinformation continues. <laughs> Who says it's a big lie? He keeps claiming that the presidential election was stolen from him and that Democrats must be defeated because they are socialists. Yeah, have you ever heard of the Democratic Socialists? Isn't Bernie Sanders one? Isn't AOC one? Taken collectively, all of these moves by Trump and his allies represent an unmistakable and potentially life-changing assault on democracy. Good! Democracy means mob rule. I want my republic back. Now under threat from a man and a party who seek to establish an authoritarian autocracy. Never. This is one another thing about that side that I keep mentioning, everybody keeps mentioning. They do the thing and then turn around and try to claim it's the other side. If that was the case, then Trump would still be in power right now, and guys like this wouldn't be around anymore. Even more ominously, such yearnings have been unleashed in a large segment of the American public. Yes, we're tired of being pushed around by the minority. You can live your lives, but don't make us live your lives too. Millions of Americans continue to voice their support for Trump. In fact, recent polling indicates that two-thirds of Republicans want Trump to retain a major political role, and 44% of them want him to run for president again in 2024. So, what is both amazing and frightening is that Trump's appeal is based largely on his propaganda, his victimhood, and his fake personal attributes of superiority and greatness. And it sounds to me like you're putting words in his mouth. I've never heard him say that he was great. He makes good deals, and I think he does. He wouldn't be a billionaire if he didn't make good deals. The fact that he was an accessory to murder of 500,000 pandemic victims during his term in office is completely overlooked. That's because it's bullshit. He didn't have anything to do with those deaths. If you want to blame somebody, you should be blaming Dr. Fauci and the NIH. But don't get me distracted. His supporters are willing to turn a blind eye to his incompetence and corruption and cruelty in order to make sure that socialist, immigration-loving Democrats are defeated. Oh, let's see. Incompetence. He had the lowest unemployment. He had the lowest black unemployment. He brought all kinds of jobs to back to America. He brought us the pipeline. We were energy efficient and self-sufficient. He started uh, Space Force, which is something it sounds to me like we need, especially after that Chinese missile that went through here. So yeah, really incompetent. You, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know, this guy must live under a rock. These Americans are hungry for a return to power. To them, Trump is their ticket to an America that is racist, intolerant, aggrieved, divided, and increasingly violent. Have you looked at the map? The only places that are like that that I see are the blue areas of the United States. Now, if you see someone else getting aggravated or violent, it's only because they've been provoked. And usually, they uh, are usually defending themselves. And a lot of times we take more crap than we deserve. Don't forget that. And don't push us to the point where we don't care anymore. Losing our democracy does not seem to feature prominently in the consciousness of most Americans, who do not understand that democracy is inherently fragile and not guaranteed to us by divine destiny. 
No, it isn't. It is, but it isn't as long as we got people in office like there are now. Many seem to take it for granted. Yeah, this is America. But the end of free and open elections would destroy our democracy. I agree. That's the reason why 2020 sucks so bad. And you know why. Corruption running amok would destroy our democracy. Yeah, just take a look at all the blue areas in the United States right now. Using the Department of Justice to hide malfeasance and to prosecute political rivals would destroy our democracy. Okay, I don't remember Trump doing that, but I sure remember Obama doing that. And uh, it sounds to me like if they get this trillion dollar whatever it is through, that uh, they're going to hire 85,000 more IRS agents to do that as well. Trump never did that. Nepotism and widespread incompetence would destroy our democracy. I agree. Again, we don't have a democracy, but I see nothing but nepotism going on in the higher-ups of government on the Democrat side, i.e. Nancy Pelosi, i.e. Um, the governor of California, i.e. who knows how all of these people are related. In fact, I know that there's a video out there somewhere that tells you which news anchor is married to which senator or uh, congressperson or any kind of person that's involved in any of the governmental dealings or mechanics. So yeah, tell me another one about nepotism. And unabashed grifting and corruption at public expense would destroy our democracy. Yes, I see that all the time. Once again, Nancy Pelosi. Didn't her husband make a fortune on Tesla right before our commander and our, our dear leader? announced that he wanted all government vehicles to be electric. Once again, don't tell me about unabashed grifting and corruption at public's expense. And on top of that, they make all of this money and they're going to raise our taxes again and watch every dime that we put in and out of our bank account? I don't think so. All these examples are central elements of Trumpism and the right-wing Republican agenda. No, they aren't. It constitute their plan for America and democracy is not in their calculus. Good! Once again, we're a republic. If we were a true democracy, it would be mob rule. And if somebody decided to take your belongings, you'd have no recourse if we voted against you. Get it right, dude. Of course, if you can't even get that right, I, can't, I, I understand why you're writing all of this gibberish. This must be said again, and you're the one to say it, right? Donald Trump is not just another typical politician. You're right. He's a businessman. He never was a politician. He had to become one, though, in order to make the money that he made. Don't think that he doesn't know every single one of the politicians in all of the countries that he has buildings and businesses in. He is a malignant narcissist. Somebody made that up. No such thing. And you do have to have some kind of narcissism to be able to think that you can run the world. Yeah. I wouldn't want some tenderfoot up there going, oh, well, I don't know if I can do this. Oh, wait a minute. Whose worst intentions are to destroy anything and anyone that threatens to deprive him of power, wealth, and reverence. Since when? This is a man that goes out and hands out $100 bills to his fucking cleaning staff and his waiters and his waitresses. But he's looking to destroy anything and anyone that threatens to deprive him of power and wealth? Give me a break. He will not stop until he is stopped by others because he has no conscience or moral compass. You can't predict that. You can't say that. You don't know that. He is beyond political or personal salvation. Oh, so you're judge, jury, and, and convictor now? You're the one, you, 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 you're God now? You get to tell everybody who's beyond salvation? Who the fuck do you think you are? 
He is deceitful, conning, corrupt, and dangerous, without any regard for others. He has no business being the leader of a country. To him, public service is an anar anarchic playground for his personal gratification. His malicious intentions cannot be overestimated. Well, you seem to be doing a pretty good job of it. Trump's slow-moving coup, his runaway train, must be stopped. <laughs> Too late. In fact, they call it a slow-moving slow coup. For the first time he ever tried, and within a year, he made president. That sounds pretty fast to me. To accomplish that, several steps need to be taken immediately, and I'm sure you're going to tell us what those are, aren't you? First, Trump must be prosecuted for his misdeeds, his incitement of insurrection of the Capitol, and his attempts to sabotage the election by trying to alter the vote count, for example, in Georgia. Those things never happened, and they've already debunked the, the, uh, the Capitol thing on the 6th, several times. How many times do they have to tell you, no, your leaders are telling you this isn't happening? And I don't know what he's talking about in Georgia. He asked people to do their fucking jobs. Second, the congressional investigation of January 6th Capitol attack must be fully completed. How many times are they going to do it? They're on their third one now. And still nothing. Third, elected Republican officials who supported the insurrection must be held accountable. It wasn't an insurrection. If it was an insurrection, you remember that dancing cop that led everybody away from that hallway? His brains would be on the pavement and they would have gone right down that hallway. Don't tell me it was an insurrection. These people weren't there to hurt anybody. Otherwise, all the, all the saboteurs must be rooted out. Are you going to do it? Otherwise, they are like a cancer that is metastasizing with deadly force. No, they're not. Nobody died except for somebody at y'all's hands. We know with a high degree of certainty that Reps Mo Brooks, Lauren Boebert, Andy Biggs, Louis Gohmert, and others had contact with the insurrectionists in the days leading to the Capitol attack. Oh yeah? Prove it. These members should resign or be expelled. Once again, on your authority? Trump is hoping that his efforts will pay off in the election in 2024. Wouldn't anybody at that point trying to get elected? He does not care about the safety and happiness of the American people, and he sure as hell does not care about democracy. Yeah, he doesn't. We're in a republic. And yes, he does care about the safety of the, our democracy or the safety of our United States. He closed the border. He gave us our jobs back and he told our foreign enemies to go fuck themselves. I can't think of anything more safe than that. Not to mention all the money that he spent on new equipment for our, our military that we needed for the last 30 years. And that they gave away. So don't give me that about that either, that he doesn't care. If it's up to him, America's democratic tradition will be cast aside on the day he places his hand on the Bible and takes the oath of office again. That would mark the final triumph of his coup. If he gets voted in, it's not a coup. You're an idiot. I don't know who hired you. I don't know who the hell you are, but you're a fucking idiot. Americans are left with dramatic choice. Save democracy by rejecting Donald Trump and his Republican comrades. Only a socialist or, or, a, or a commie would call anybody else that. Only a communist would use that, that verbiage. Only. I've never, heard a, I've never heard a Republican use that to describe other people that way, even though they are, even though the other side is communist right now. Dramatic choice. Yeah, they get to vote again. And if he gets voted in, it's not a coup. He won fair and square again. And I'm going to tell you what I kept hearing during the Obama years. Deal with it or allow them to run roughshod over our hard-won democratic principles and institutions by completing their coup, which now appears to be a runaway train. It took you long enough to notice that. Like I said, he won the first time he ever ran for president, and it only took him a year. 
that is not a slow-moving anything, in politics especially. More from Salon on Donald Trump's not-so-slow-motion coup attempt. Come on, man. <laughs> Mr. Blotke is a Ph.D., clinical psychologist in Birmingham, Alabama, and a clinical associate professor at the psychology of psychology at the University of Alabama in Birmingham. Well, I've got to tell you, if he was ever in one of my child's classes, I would tell her no, 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 or him no, 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 do not take this man's cl class. He is a hateful moron. After reading this, it's, it's all just made up. He's a hateful moron. That's all I can tell you. Have you ever seen anything like this in your life? But this tells me that they're scared to death that he's going to win again. And I can only imagine what he's going through or what he's fixing to write after this last election in Virginia. Also, from reading his writing and the way that he puts a lot of things, he sounds like a pussy. This guy is so afraid of Trump that he's willing to make up anything. And as a psychologist, I think that was the actual thing that I wrote or read from him the last time was some kind of psychological mumbo jumbo about Trump after he hasn't even looked at the guy. It sounds to me like all he does is listen to Don Lemon and, and Chris Cuomo and then makes a decision based on what somebody else is saying. So yeah, on top of that, this guy's a plain, plain old pussy. He's afraid of he's afraid of another man. And he thinks he's got so much power as the president. If he actually knew what the Constitution was about and how everything was actually supposed to work and how Trump was trying to make it work the way it was supposed to, originally by the Founding Fathers, which again had nothing to do with race, he would know that Trump was not all powerful. And even when he did try to use his power, they wouldn't let him. That's what the government, the three branches of the government are supposed to do. Keep an eye on each other so that one branch doesn't have more power than the other and doesn't subjugate the American people to tyranny. All I can say is, let's go, Brandon. I do hope you enjoyed my video today. Don't forget. I'm going live coming up December the 2nd, 7 p.m. Central. I'm calling the series Talk to Me America. My call-in talk show will feature you. Call in and tell the universe how you feel about the topics that affect us the most. Let us know what your experience was when things we see happening have happened to you. We cannot be free without the freedom of speech, and I want to be a part of that freedom that we are guaranteed by our Creator. So stay tuned and get your voices ready to speak out. Spread the news and stay tuned for Here's What I Heard's Talk To Me America series coming up December the 2nd, 7 p.m. Central. In the meantime, please give us a like, a share, a subscribe, and a comment. You will be doing this on my call-in talk show, so start letting me know what you heard now in the comments. The best comments and the best phone calls will be featured in my videos all over the internet. The world wants to hear what you have to say, so call me and tell them like it is. A donation would be the ultimate and will help me get your voice out on as many platforms as possible. And you can follow me on those other platforms too. All of my links are below. Click on some of them, will ya? Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Until next time.